What I have here is an i7 11800HES CPU motherboard combo that I picked up on AliExpress for just 200 Canadian dollars. And this, as you can see, is not a normal CPU motherboard combo. In fact, it's a laptop CPU soldered onto this weird Chinese G613 Pro motherboard, and it's by an unknown brand called Earring. So without further delay, let's cue the intro and get to the video. Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the most underrated tech channel. And as you saw from the intro, this is an i7 11800HES laptop chip soldered onto this weird Chinese motherboard. And on paper, it looked like a super great price to performance combo for just 200 Canadian dollars. It's got eight cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 2.2 GHz and a turbo up to 4.5 GHz with a TDP of only 45 wow. watts with the support of PCIe Gen 4 devices. Also, it supposedly has onboard graphics but I didn't bother testing it because of all the issues I have encountered. Even though it sounds like an amazing value from a quick glance at the motherboard that the chip is soldered on, it's got the worst VRN design for a chip with that many cores and it only has two RAM slots which could be a deal breaker considering that there's no way anyone can slot in 128 GB of RAM into that. Now let's talk about the issues I encountered with this combo. So first of all, the BIOS is just so damn cluttered with so many useless features that no one will understand nor does half of them even work properly, which is why the overclocking feature on mine does not work at all, which also means that XMP does not work and RAM speed can only go up to 2666 no matter which kit I've used. And on top of that, turning on the OC feature actually gives me a lot of blue screens of death in Windows. And also, so the smart fan feature does not work on any other port other than the CPU fan port. So if you plug a fan into any of the other ports on the motherboard, the fan will run at 100% fan speed. Secondly, I just could not get Windows 11 installed properly on the motherboard without updating it from Windows 10. I tried fresh installing it with three different USB drives and versions, but it will always freeze up at the setup screen and restart, which is a very strange issue because if it works from Windows 10 to 11, why would it work on a fresh install? But let me know down in the description if you found a fix for this. And finally, for the last issue I have encountered, is that the top two USB 3.0 ports on the back I.O. does not register left clicks properly in full screen games, which is super weird because left click works fine when I'm not playing any games, but that issue could be solved by just using the other four USB ports located below. Now, with all that said, here's the parts I used to test this combo and build a PC with. So obviously I'm using the i7-11700HES processor with the Chinese motherboard. To cool the CPU, I'm using the best budget tower cooler in Canada, which is the Thermorite AS X120 SE ARGB black cooler. And it should be more than enough to cool the CPU even with the TDP limit removed, which I did not do because like I said, it would just give me BSOD. As for the RAM, I'm using this kit of 16GB white DDR4 clocked at 2666MHz since anything faster would just also run at 2666. Then for the storage, it's just some random brand 1TB NVMe SSD I got off of AliExpress which works absolutely fine apart from not being able to pass the user benchmark test, which was replaced by a fully functioning one when I sold the PC. Anyways, for the graphics card, I decided to use this brand new RX 6500 XT 4GB that I got a while back from a local dealer of mine for just 150 Canadian bucks. And back then, it was an amazing deal considering it's brand new and it performs similar to a RX 580 if it's used with a PCIe 4.0 compatible CPU, which this Chinese motherboard and CPU combo supports. So it was a no-brainer for me to test out this graphics card as well as getting rid of it because I had it for a while now. And all of this is going to be put together inside this Q300 budget cooler master case with ARGB fans and powered by 80 plus bronze as a 550 watt power supply. Now with all that out of the way, here are some benchmarks. First up, I tested Rainbow Six Siege and at the high preset but with FX AA, I got an average of 163 FPS with a minimum FPS of 127. And honestly, this result really surprised me because I just assumed that this card performs similar to a GTX 1050 Ti from all the negative attention it has received. So from these results, you can clearly see that if you only play Rainbow Six Siege, this is the perfect graphics card for 144Hz 1080p monitors. For the next built-in benchmark game I tested was Warhammer Vermintide 2 at the high preset at DX12. I got an average of 73 FPS. Even though this game is not the latest and greatest, it's still pretty demanding on hardware and it's still a pretty popular Warhammer game in 2023.
And here is the final built-in benchmark game that I tested, which is Cyberpunk at the low preset. I got an average of 57 FPS and a 1% low of 36 FPS. As you can see from the result, you could achieve a stable 60 FPS if you just fine-tune the settings a little bit. But this card is definitely not meant for playing AAA titles in the first place anyways, so this result is still pretty good. Now for the manual benchmark games, I first tested Overwatch 2 at the high preset and the graphics card was able to achieve an average of 173 FPS with a 1% low of 82. And once again, this is a perfect example of how this card is perfect for esports titles if you could get it for around 150 to 100 Canadian dollars. Next up, I tested everyone's favorite dating software that's not Tinder, Valorant, at max settings. I got an average of 254 FPS with a 1% low of 105 FPS. With this game, as long as you have a good CPU, you're all good to go. Up next, I tested the better PUBG, which is Warzone 2.0 at the balance preset with no FSR. I got a surprising result of 91 FPS with a 1% low of 58 FPS. This is the most surprising result I got from testing this graphics card considering this graphics card only has 4GB of VRAM and Warzone is known to be very intensive on GPU. And on top of that, this is with no upscaling technology. Okay, before this video turned into a RX 6500 XC review, if you're paying attention on the top left hand corner, the CPU clock speed kind of go back and forth between 4.4 and 3.8 GHz. This is because the VRMs are really bad so it cannot maintain a proper clock speed at all times. And on top of that, the CPU utilization is already at a very low percentage, so you do not want to see fluctuating clock speeds like that. But if you really insist on buying this combo instead of buying a Ryzen 5 5500 or 5600 a cheap A320M motherboard combo, you have no bottlenecks if you pair it up with a graphics card like an RTX 4070. But if you want to see a more in-depth video about this combo, you can check out Tech Yes City's video on this motherboard. And I can tell you that he was not very happy about this motherboard also. With that said, if you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't, still give this video a like and subscribe to the channel because nobody can see the dislike numbers anyways. So you just be wasting your energy and time. Yeah. Now enjoy a time lapse of the Cinebench R23 benchmark.